This question is from Orlando. It's a long question, so sit back, relax, grab some popcorn, you name it. Okay, so, okay, here's what I'll start with. Um, I have pain in almost the entire right side of my body. My right toes occasionally tingle. Sometimes my right and pinky finger will get a slight tingle. Um, tingling also toes, last two fingers. Um, the person has pain in the right knee, right side of the neck, right side of the jaw, behind the ear on the right side, around the right shoulder blade, down to the collarbone um, on the right, um, and then also the right glutes. And a few times lately I've woken to extremely painful cramps in my right calf. It is really weird to me that all of this is on my right side. I've spoken with doctors, but I have nothing to offer me except naproxen, and I'm not too keen on being on a diet of blank, LOL, okay, so, <laughs> and kind of vigorous repetitive motions with my right knee, like scrambling eggs in a bowl, will give me a pretty knotty cramp in the area where the right side of my neck meets the right side of my shoulder. I spend a lot, a lot of time on the computer, probably eight hours a day a week. I um, changed um, the chair I sit in recently before the pain in my um, knee started. Maybe just all my muscles are getting tight and pulling each other and it's having sort of a chain reaction. A lady friend also told me that I grind my teeth in my sleep, so maybe it's some TMJ too. It took a while to find that on the net. Do you have any other ideas or suggestions that could uh, maybe help lead me in the right direction to start the proper um, helping out or maybe even some things I could to do to help relieve this and eventually recover from it? Again, been watching your videos for a while and I've always enjoyed them. Anything you can do, um, have to say, uh, would be very appreciated and flattering. Thank you. <laughs> um, with, with that, the right side, you're honestly talking about me. Because <laughs> I myself, I have a lot of right pain problems. And what all started with was, it seems weird, but a sprained ankle. And a sprained ankle that probably didn't heal right is the main thing um, that causes all my aches and pains mostly. But, uh, um, and also, too, I have a deformity. It's called a, like a gunstock deformity. My arm is not straight, so it goes here, and then it's actually built, bent at like a 45 degree angle. So I'll just stand up and show you what that looks like. So this is actually straight. If you can see this. But most people don't realize I have that kind of problem at all because I hold it so much and I'm, my shoulder is constantly internally rotated like this and I just have a holding pattern on, on my whole right side of the body um, because of that and also because of my sprained ankle. So that's a big indication of that. Um, if you, you said your last two fingers tingle, um, more likely if you find a therapist that does posture evaluation, they might find out that your one, your right side, more likely your shoulder, is up more, so it's impinging this area. So when people, especially when they sleep at night, if they sleep with their arm above their head, that's constantly impinging that area, and it's breaking off the circulation, the brachial plexus region up here, and it's tingling the last two fingers. Is what's happening. So that's why, um, if you can change your sleeping pattern, so it'd be huge. I mean, ideally, if people could sleep on their back with a, a roll, um, a, like a foam roll, or, or even roll of a toe underneath their neck, and sleep with something underneath their knees to help support their, um, to relieve their lower back problems. So those are two areas. But again, the average person usually starts on their side and ends up on the stomach when they're sleeping at night. And with the pain going down the leg, sometimes um, if it's tingling sensations, it might be. Um, I, again, I'm a massage therapist, I can't diagnose anything, but it can be like sciatic problems. There's a sciatic nerve that runs through the glute region, and if that gets impinged, and some people even call it piriformis syndrome, so the piriformis muscle uh, that can impinge on that area gets tingling down the leg. There's another muscle, it's called the gluteus minimus, and um, I got a um, video, video clip on that too, I'll leave uh, um, the clip in the, the sidebar. So you can um, check that out too, so you know where those those aches and pains and problems are then. So for the piriformis and for the gluteus minimus, I'll leave it in the sidebar so you can know where they're at then. But the one right in the center of the glute that will typically go down the back of the leg, the other one 
um, will go typically down the lateral side of the leg. So it all depends on where you're actually having the um, sensations and pain for those kind of things. And, and there's a thing called tarsal tunnel syndrome. I don't know if you've heard of that, but it's a posterior tibial nerve. So it's um, back behind the calf region, that posterior tibial nerve that gets impinged and it can kind of mimic carpal tunnel even because it cuts off circulation. So more than likely you're at your computer desk um, and more likely your shoulder is up, more compressed. And even when people get up and walk around, sometimes that's not enough. You just got to mentally think um, to correct your posture, sit up straight, uh, have a little curvature in your lumbar region and not be hunched over like this. So um, I know um, some, some places that here in the town that I live, they even have ergonomic teams. So when people are starting to have problems, what they do is they have this team come in and evaluate you for sitting, for standing, you, you name it. But they might give you an ergonomic uh, keyboard and special chair and all these kind of things to help with those repetitive stress injuries. Then. So those kind of things can help. Also, just being aware of how you walk. So if somebody's having pain in your white right leg and stuff too, um, sometimes the gluteal muscles are more con um, compressed and contracted and the leg and the foot is going out more. So runners sometimes will have that too. When they're running, if their one foot goes out more, that means those muscles are more comp um, contracted then. So you sometimes have to bring your leg over and stretch that out, the gluteal region, also the TFL region, to help those areas out as much as possible. But again, like the uh, for TMJ problems, again, can't diagnose, but this is one evaluation sometimes they'll do is they'll have, th um, you, you have your three fingers go like this, open up, and then fit your three fingers in your mouth comfortably. If, um, that, more than likely, um, you don't have TMJ or, again, I, I'm not diagnosing at all, just because, again, I'm a massage therapist and not a doctor or anything, but you might want to bring this up to a doctor um, if you do have the clicking or grinding or those kind of problems. So they can um, give you some options of what to do to help help you out with that. Because sometimes you don't even realize it at night that you are grinding or uh, clicking or things. And um, there is a uh, mouth massage too, so you can go inside your mouth and massage those areas. And I'll put a link in the description bar too for that video that I've made in the past um, to help out with that then. Um, let me see what else. So it's main thing is if you could correct your posture um, if you correct your posture that will sometimes correct your pain so there's a style called uh, myofascial release or structural integration ralphing those different forms the, um, they tend to try to correct your posture to correct your pain so they're not necessarily going after your painful areas they kind of have a protocol in a way especially ralphing they got a 10 series protocol to um, go over certain areas of the body and to try to realign itself and to help with the posture. And what, um, for my classes, what I do is I have my students in bathing suits and standing against the wall, make sure they're relaxed. But I take a picture of them on the anterior, um, post, posterior side um, and both um, lateral sides too. And what I do is I put them into this program and then I can make lines and see where if there's one shoulder is higher than the other or not then and you can find out the problems before you even touch them. So that's what's so nice about it. But again, a lot of massage therapists are not skilled at posture evaluation. But those are the kind of things you might want to check around. But I know chiropractors in general and physical therapists, you, sometimes you have to ask them to do those kind of things. So it would help. But um, they could tell you um, what, what areas or what problems you're doing um, wrong the most then. Or if you want to, you can just have somebody um, in... In, um, it sounds like you're male, so you just uh, in your shorts, and with that, to stand in your shorts, just have them take a picture of your uh, front side, and then you have have you turn and get the side, and then back on the other side. And if you want, you can send me those four pictures to massagener at yahoo.com, and what I'll do is I'll put them on, um, I'll make lines so you can see your own posture then, so I'm willing to do that if you want that. So that's my options, and I hope that helped. I know it was kind of long and lengthy, but you um, had a lot there, and um, thanks for asking, and anytime. So, again, comments in the section below. Thanks.